see you. Welcome to the King Boy Channel. Today here we are here today to talk about top five pros and cons oh, for my truck. And I, I feel like I never made this video before. Uh, I was watching a few other YouTubes. Kind of gave me ideas. I'm not going to lie. This did come from an idea from another YouTube. Uh, but in a way, the top five pros and cons that I like about my truck and don't like about my truck. One, I'm going to start with the cons and then I'm going to do a pro. But one of my cons on this truck right here that I do not like with this body style, with this F, with my truck right here, is the optional lifts. Uh, I think everybody that have a liver gen uh, agree with me when it comes to uh, the availability of lift kits. Uh, you got the uh, Zone 6 inch lift, you have the BDS 6 inch lift, six inch lift. you have a Fourth Country 6 inch lift, you have a Fabtech 6 inch lift, a Pro Comp 6 inch lift. No Bongartas. Bongartas don't even make a lift for this truck, which is sad because it kind of sucks that Bongartas make a lift for a 2012 gen but don't make one for uh, a uh, 11 gen. Uh, also, if you want to go bigger, you got either the bulletproof lift, which is just way too big in my opinion, 12 inches lift, or you go, you got a uh, four throttle six or eight inch, four throttle eight inch, which is actually about the perfect lift for what you want for these trucks right here. Uh, if I ever go with another lift, it will probably most likely be a four throttle eight inch lift, but it just uh, compared to like the Chevrolet and Dodge, they have a lot more options, even to the new F-150s. The new F-150s got, you know, Ridge lift, uh, I think they got Max Track. Uh, they may, uh, they got a uh, Magazi lift, or some people might call it Magura lift. It, they definitely have a lot more options. For me, that's one of my biggest things that, one of my biggest con with the living gen truck is parts availability, the aftermarket availability. Uh, now, one of the uh, pros I like about this truck right here is these fenders. As you see, these fenders are round. Round tie, round fenders. What that gives me the uh, uh, option to do is be able to fit a bigger wheel, uh, especially in the front. Uh, with the Chevrolet's, I don't Dodge actually can fit a bigger wheel than Ford, dude. but as the Chevrolet's, that's kind of common for them. Them having the square fenders makes them look good, but the square fender you can't really put a bigger, a bigger of a wheel. Uh, as you can see right here, I got no body lift on the truck. The truck has no body. It's a straight six inch lift with two inch level stacked on top of the River Country lift, and I get full turn. I have about a finger clearance now, finger clearance. But I got four turn, as you can see. Uh, I can turn all the way to the left, all the way to the right, no rubbing at all. Every now and then it'll rub if I hit a bump or something. But that is one of the biggest pro, pro biggest pros in my truck. Also, another con. Now here's another con about the truck right here that I don't like right here. Uh, is one of the biggest con is performance. As you, if anybody in their mama know and their grandma know, a three valve does not make that much power. Uh, it is not a three valve stop will keep up with a, with a, with a Dodge and a Chevrolet, but when it comes to them putting the aftermarket support, they don't have the aftermarket support. Uh, like a 5.7 Hemi would run, it would run circles around. It would be like Usain Bolt versus a toddler. I mean, it, it, would, it would run out of sight. Same way it is for LS. You get even a 4.8 LS where I run a Gen 3 would, would basically run out of sight on these trucks. Each, the performance on his truck, uh, now you can put parts on there. There's a few aftermarket with the, uh, because as you know, I don't have the 5.4, I have the 4.6. But they are some aftermarket to give it some more power. Which would mean, we ever make it compatible with a 4.8 and possibly a 5.3. But a 5.3 with four bolt ons or 6.0, it's definitely a 6.0 or 5.7. We're just going to run out, it's just going to run out of sight on it. Especially if it's a 6.0 LT or Generation 4, any LS motor basically, it's, it's going to basically run out of sight on each other. It's, that is one of my biggest cons because I, I'm a big thing of performance. I like, I like to go fast. Even to be, to be as big as it, I still want to have the, uh, the power to be able to just roast these 26s like I want to. Uh, now, pros this truck. Pros. One of my biggest pros. And I think it's because of this engine option. is the rear end. The, as you see right there, that's a 8.8 uh, .8 rear end. Now, I don't know if y'all know anything about 8.8 .8 rear end, but that is one of the best rear ends that you can make. I've seen 8.8 .8 rear ends hold up to 1,500 horsepower. They put them in pull mods. 8.8 .8 rear end is this rear end is very very likable. Uh, the the options that they got for it, they got, it, got a 31 spline axle. Uh, also, the way the pinion made, if you look, the, it, I don't know if you can see too well, but the way the pinion made in these trucks is so stout, like the bolts are so thick, like they like the size of my finger, like they they are huge. 
and you don't have re-in problems with the truck. It's very like the re in the trucks are stopped. And I got aftermarket gears. I don't have to start re in no more. I got it uh 456 gears, Yukon gears, uh, in the front and back. And I got a uh true check or what they call eating true check re in carry, which is rated to like probably over, over 800 horsepower. So that re in right there. True positive traction, it just spin both tires no matter what. It's not gonna bear leg. It, it's 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 a stout rear end. And that's probably one of my biggest pros. Uh, I think I got more three more cons and pros. One of my other cons I don't like for this truck. The room off on the seat. Y'all may if anybody own an F-150, y'all know what I'm talking about with the room off on the seat. Matter of fact, let me open the door. That way you can get a better view of what I'm talking about. Alright. Look at this right here. I got a speaker box on the seat. That may be eight inches right there. See, there's compared to a Chevrolet, they got this much seat height. Now they make a lift kit for a seat, which I don't. I I honestly didn't know thought about putting one in, but uh, they do make a lift kit for these seats to raise it up. But it, you cannot put a deep box in it, so that means you won't be able to run your uh, your, your classic kicker uh, and have kicker comps or kicker comps or stuff like that you have to run saddle mounts basically to get in to fit in that box and that means when you have a saddle mount it's not going to hit as hard as a uh a full side like power acoustic gothic or something or like full side kicker comp or l7 or something like that so that's another thing another big con that i don't like about the truck now another pro i like about the truck is the uh it's how big they sit a six inch lift on this truck sits huge compared to a lot of other trucks. Uh, because it's been a strut lift and rocket pain in the front, uh, the six inch lift with this two to the level with 37s on it, this truck is matching. It may not look this matching in the video right here, but this truck is huge. Like, if I pull next to a round body or cat eye body style or or pull up to like a uh, like an older Dodge or even an older F-150, this truck dwarfs the, like far as height wise. This, this, this truck is huge. Uh, and that's that's another thing I like about it. So the suspension on the truck, you don't really have suspension problems. Also, uh, because the way the suspension is made, the right opinion made, you don't have problems with angles either. Uh, like you look at that, I got two inch level, and my upper control on looks like a start. It looks like it, it doesn't look any more different than a. Uh, now these are two inch drops upper control on. The reason why the angles are that good, but you don't have lower bar on bar joint angles, and you don't have to worry about. And you know how some trucks uh. You got to cut the tie rod in half to uh to put the lift kit in. You don't you don't have to worry about none of that right there. So suspension is definitely key. It's definitely a good thing on the truck. Uh, another con I don't like about the truck. Uh, it's not really a major con, but it is a con in my opinion. Is the four R seventy trimmers. The four R seventy trimmers in the e trucks. They are now they are way in my opinion they are better than a four sixty. They are a lot stouter than a four sixty. But they ain't no, they ain't no six R eighty or ten R eighty or eight speed or none of that either. It, it, it's, it's this trim has been rebuilt before. Uh, the overdrives in these trim are notorious about going out. They, the clutch band I've been told is so thin that it, it tends to go, it tends to either snap the uh, snap ring out that goes in the. Uh, let, me, let me get it right, actuator. I may be speaking it wrong, but it's a snap ring in the trim and that controls the overdrive. I can't remember what they, exactly what they call it, but it uh. It's notorious for breaking, which well, luckily it wasn't my case. My case, it was just my clutches was bad and it was just slipping. Uh, the truck does got over 200,000 miles on it. Uh, but that's a, that's a con for me right there on these trucks right here. Now, another pro, a pro now, I like about this truck though, is the way the door handles made and the interior. Uh, see, I didn't even unlock that door. The interior of the truck is a. Uh, it's actually pretty dang good. It looks cheap. This, this is a basic model F-150. This is not a Lariat, so it don't have the fancy interior. But the interior on these trucks are pretty good. Uh, dads don't crack. You never have to worry about dads cracking or nothing like that. Uh, door handles, you know how some... And y'all, y'all, If y'all own a Civil y'all know y'all may notice. If it get too cold outside and you grab your door handle, it might brick off. Uh, you don't really have that issue with the with the uh, Fords. Now, con for the truck is the rear doors. The rear doors... My other rear door, I just fixed it, just broke again. Uh, so I cannot open that door right there. I gotta, I actually gotta fix that again. Well, I halfway fixed it. Now I gotta actually legit fix it. Uh, these doors right here, only 2004 to 8 F1511 F gens, they are bad about, they have like little safety tabs in it. That, uh, they have like little safety tabs basically, about this long. Uh, 
they know you call them tape ties. I'm not really what they call them, but they add itself too. Uh, you still have to kind of shake on a little bit, put a little press on it. Uh, and possibly one of the uh, I'm gonna say my most most biggest con with this truck right here. Uh, is besides the aftermarket support and then and the motor performance, it's probably the uh, rel it's reliability. Uh, these trucks for that and now my truck don't really have this issue, but the five fours are notorious for about about spark plugs. Uh, what is? Uh, camera phrase is going bad. I don't really have that because I have the four six. The four six is known to be a little bit more reliable than the five four. And that may be reason why I didn't have that much issue, but. I have had a few engine issues though, and one of the major issues I had was the intake. The intakes are made of like some kind of polyester rubber or something plastic, and over time they dry right, and four intakes got cooling going through it. Uh, now I don't know exactly how that works right there. I haven't did a lot of research on it. I guess it cools the air that comes in, but those intakes are notorious about over time they dry right, and then they start cracking and they start leaking in uh, coolant through the intake, and that is probably my biggest con with this truck. It's the intake. The intake on these trucks is, is just garbage. And, it, and then the aftermarket ones that come with it are not even much better. Like, if you're not buying one straight from Ford dealership, which is going to cost you about $700, I, I made it in a previous video. If you look down some of my older videos, I try to buy, I asked an OEM intake, aftermarket intake money for it. It's like $700. And that's, to me, in my opinion, that's just, that's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, that's probably my one of my major cons. That, that right there is just, it, it makes no sense. That's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, and my last biggest pro, biggest pro of the truck right here, is the uh, besides the uh, besides the uh, the suspension and all that, it's uh, when you, it's the cams you put in these trucks. I don't know if you ever had a three valve with a cam in, but it it sounds like a big block. Like it it is it massive shot. I guess it could be with the VVT, the variable timing to get in. But the cams that you put in these trucks, it it sound ridiculous. It, it, it literally sound like speaking like John Force Funny Car or something. Like it is just insane the way these trucks sound when it uh, the sound of these trucks is, is just the the sound they make is just ridiculous. They, they like a Coyote can never make this sound. I had to, and I hate I, I'm a I like a Coyote because I wish I had a Coyote. But they did they would could never make a good sound three valve made. A uh, three valve is remind me of the old 302 50s. Like they they make it's the best sound you hear it just the way it sounds is just amazing those are my top five you know likes top five things i don't like top five cons pros uh and that's about it right there it's not uh besides the uh engine performance and the transmission and the intake those are like my major major con with these trucks because every truck got their own pros and cons but for this since i have 11 gen i'm gonna have to speak i want to speak on it on this right here if you are shopping for f-150 and you want to buy a uh, a new F-150. If you have the money, I'm and this is coming from me personally, skip over this buy style. This buy style right here is it's, it's a good buy style. But it's you just the 2011 on L, it's just so much available. I would recommend if you want to go with the F-150, I would definitely skip over I would skip over the 96 all the way to 2010 and get a 2011 because they had the three valves in it. The uh, 97 2003 had the uh, the two valve on it, which is a little bit better motor in a way, but it doesn't have the power. You, they just don't have the power support. The, I mean, the Coyote, like the OBS four now, like the old five O's and 351 Windsor, the 96 on down, get them if you can find them in good shape. Get them. Uh, the 2011 on up, get them. They, they got more options, more lifts, more aftermarket support. They faster, got six-speed trimmers, they all the way around, better truck. Interior better, all the bells and whistles, traction control, all that. So uh, if you were buying an F-150 and you coming from a Chevy or Dodge, whatever, you say, oh, I want to buy an F-150, buy your 2011 on up. You cannot go wrong. In my opinion, if you even had the money, go with a 15 on up because they got the Gen 2 Coyote and they got a, a whole lot more horsepower, better interior, just all the way around, more aftermarket support. So this is the King Boy Challenge. That's my top five pros and cons. Like, share, subscribe. Also, y'all check this out. This video after this right here. Uh, the scene, I got the giveaway item. Uh, y'all might like it. Some people might want it. Some people might not want it. Uh, if you want to buy one like it, 
I'm going to send you an Amazon link. It's going to be down in the description below. You can click on my Amazon link and order it from that. And uh, and it'll be exactly what I'm uh, doing the giveaway on. But if you want to wait on time to hit the 500 subscribers and, and actually put in a chance to get in the giveaway, this don't cost you no money now. This, this, doesn't cost you any, this, this is actually a free giveaway. Like I'm actually giving this away from my hard-on pocket, my money, to one of y'all that support me. Because without y'all, I can't be what I'm doing right now. So this is the King Boy China, and yeah, like, share, subscribe, help us get to that 500, and we out. Get it on the north slap business. I came from the trenches. I made to the rich. We took a lot of risks. Don't no swear with the fish. Hand touch a lot of dollars. I don't count a whole me. Pop my collar. I can bring back pimping. Keep two star phone. I'm coding. Sipping on brand from the bottom. I still ain't finished. Headed to the top and I still ain't finished. I sit up and I walk and I still.